When I think of Hawaii, I think of papayas, pineapples, and mangoes, beautiful lush landscapes, pristine beaches, the gracious, generous spirit of the people, and that God's work is growing in the islands. Aloha, I'm Connie Vanderman Jeffrey, and this is Focus on Hawaii Week on All God's People. Adventist work began in the Hawaiian Islands in 1884, when Abram LaRue and Henry Scott went there at their own expense to do missionary work and sell books. Pioneer and historian John Loughborough records, this awakened such an interest on the island that the General Conference in November 1885 voted that Elder William Healy go the next season to Hawaii to labor. Preaching the gospel in a 50-foot tent, Healy saw nine people give their lives to Christ and be baptized. A.J. Cudney followed Healy to Honolulu and on July 22, 1888, organized the nine members into the First Adventist Church in Hawaii. But this was not reported to the General Conference because a few days later, he set sail for Pitcairn Island and he and his ship never arrived, all being lost at sea. The church was not officially recognized until February 22, 1896 with 15 members. On her way to Australia in 1891, Ellen White's ship stopped in Honolulu for 19 hours, during which time she spoke to a large audience at the YMCA in downtown Honolulu. On her return from Australia, she also stopped in Honolulu on September 14, 1900. She describes the warm welcome she received, visiting the sanitarium and speaking to a large number of people at the church. It was a great privilege to meet with these brethren and sisters, and we wished that we could spend two or three weeks with them, she said. In 1895, Adventist education set down roots with the formation of the first school, Anglo-Chinese Academy, which later became Hawaiian Mission Academy in 1920. And in 1929, the Hawaiian Mission became a part of the Pacific Union family. Since opening its doors in 1963, Adventist Health Castle has maintained close ties with the community. A recipient of the 2017 Baldridge National Quality Award, the hospital is the largest provider of emergency medical services on Windward, Oahu. The work has continued to grow. As of August 2020, the membership of the Hawaii Conference is 6,311 with 34 congregations. Praise God for the work of literature evangelists LaRue and Scott nearly 140 years ago. But what's happening now in October 2020? Hawaiian Mission Academy is back to in-classroom instruction. They had adjusted to online learning from March 13 to the close of the last school year. But over the summer months, it was decided that classes could resume earlier than normal. Students and staff have transitioned beautifully to the new guidelines and school started on August 3. Every morning, students are required to come into the school office and get their temperature checked by a thermal camera nicknamed Turk by the students. When they arrive in the classroom, desks are spread out according to CDC guidelines. The staff sprays the desks with disinfectant while students wipe down their own desks with the cloths they received that morning. Chapels are currently still being conducted virtually through Zoom, with each class remaining in their homeroom. Even though school events such as Vespers, socials, and sports are not yet approved by the city and county, students are happy that most of their school routine has been approved. Let's continue to pray for all our educators throughout Hawaii and the Union as they find new ways to adapt to the challenges of the pandemic. How does a pastor teach older members how to use technology like Zoom and Google Suite? Pastor Jean Gluzet of the Y Manalo and Wahiwa churches knew the challenge of reaching the kapuna, or older members, would be high. When the churches were still meeting, he set aside Sabbath afternoons for technology lessons. We wanted to focus on learning, Pastor Cluzet said, but also we wanted to stay organized. So along with the video platforms, he taught Google Suite so the members could have a hub to work together on church functions. Because of his determination and passion for connection, he has been able to get his church leadership all online and over a dozen ministries and church functions are meeting regularly. Members can assess all these meetings through a vast network of texting trees, shared church Google Calendar appointments via web pages, Facebook pages, and email newsletters. As an unexpected bonus of this online pivot, the churches have reached new visitors. The Oahu youth and young adults were able to gather online without skipping a beat. 
although it was different, the technology and practice of using Zoom and other online platforms wasn't new. Together, they coped with the swift changes in isolation through prayer, Bible study, and bonding online. They decided to gather online every Tuesday to check in with each other, calling it Taco Tuesdays. When the restrictions were lifted, they were so grateful to gather, both virtually and face-to-face, -face, staying within state guidelines. They began to gather outdoors in safer spaces and were able to sing, pray, and barbecue while visiting different beaches and parks around the island. When the beaches closed again, they were able to gather in church parking lots and participate in tailgate worship. As of now, they are holding tailgate worship in the parking lot of the Honolulu Central Church. Although they are members of different churches, they are still one church body, one ohana in Hawaii. The young people report it's exciting to be part of a thriving ministry that is Holy Spirit driven. Blessings to all the young people of Hawaii. From HMA students following strict guidelines for in-person learning, to older members learning new technology to stay connected, to young people having tailgate worships in church parking lots, our members in the Aloha State are living examples of how to thrive in these challenging times. I can't help but think of Sister White's visit back in 1900. How thrilled she would be to see what has happened in Hawaii in the past 120 years. Mahalo, Hawaii Conference, for your amazing witness to all God's people. And thank you for joining us this week. We'll be back again next week. I'm Connie Jeffrey.